All right, so basically I made this video because I'm pretty much in the market to, to get one of these cameras. And, but I'm really on the fence because I don't think none of them are actually worth it because we're always forced because of stupid marketing to leave some kind of, you know, restrictions with some kind of like features that are missing from these cameras. So let me explain. So for example, you have the Z Z6 or Z6. Now, this camera seems to be, you know, nice and it's coming a long way and it comes with an adapter and you have your native lens because otherwise your video is not as good because your focusing is not so good with all lenses and they make noise. The problem with this camera is I think that the biggest downside is the fact that this one has an XQD card which are stupidly expensive and with this, for example, maybe you are able to record about maybe two hours, maybe. So now this is in cell with all this kit you know which is pretty good compared to the sony for example that's uh, you know 2000 without nothing so you still have to buy lenses and uh, stuff but this one is it, you know you, you're getting i think a lot more by getting this camera now i'm not sponsored by nikon or amazon or none of this but i'm just saying you know so basically and then you have to buy a reader and uh and a card and you end up at you know 2250 let's say and you're still missing features like i said and this camera it's like i said for me these cameras are like an accessory that you use on the gimbals and the sliders and for that we need good outer focus and this camera it's with the newer updates seems to do a better job than before so it's com you know it's basically compatible with the sony and also has like full touch capabilities to where the sony doesn't have that so you know, at the end of the day, this is very good focusing camera. Like, it, you know, the autofocus is super good, which is good for using it on the gimbals or sliders even. Because when you do interviews, you know, you, it's nice to use sliders to, 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 to get like a more dynamic type of shots. And you need autofocus for that because the perspective changes. And then so, so anyway, the point is that this camera is good at that, but then, for one, it doesn't have full touch, you know, capabilities. So if you want a gimbal, you have, you know, issues. You cannot change your settings. At least you, you know, what do you do? You just stop and you try to, you know, hold the camera and change your settings and then, you know, start the gimbal again. It's like, it's a little bit stupid, honestly. And, um, uh, this is another, this on the Sony, this is the biggest downside besides the fact that the screen shuts off when you plug a monitor into it. So, this for me, it's, it's, you know, it's a downside. Now, the good side about this is that it uses normal SD cards to where the Nikon, it doesn't. It uses these stupid ass expensive Sony cards. And this makes me think that this has a Sony sensor probably. And the Sony, you know, they give them the sensors, but they probably told them, look, you have to put this type of cards into it. Even though actually they, they probably put this card into it because it needs to, clear the buffer for photography, but not for video. For, for, the, for the video, you don't need that. You know, I mean, they have the, the DA50 that uh, shoots 4K video just the same as the Z6, and it has a normal SD card that you can shoot the video into, and you have no problems with it. So it's not needed. And this one also shoots very high, I mean, not so high frame rates, but, you know, decent, and it has, you know, very high megapixel count, which is, it has, what, 45.4 megapixel? Um, and it's fine with the normal SD cards. One of them is a fast SD card. But I think, honestly, if if this camera had a flip-out screen and a normal SD card, this would be would, would break the market compared to you know the other cameras because everybody would choose this, and especially now with the better autofocusing. Besides the fact that they don't have so many lenses and the lenses are expensive now, so you know. If you have to choose between the Sony and the Nikon, it's it's a little bit difficult, I think, because, like I said, you you have to spend more money for media, but you get, you know, better, basically, uh, it's a better handling type of camera, I think, compared to the Sony. And the Sony, what it has going on for it is the fact that, you know, it has very good autofocusing, and, uh, and that's it, basically, because, you know, you're losing the screen when you plug something into it, and you, you have all kinds of other issues. And um, it was a big, big deal about this camera when it first came out. But I think at the end of the day, it's not that special. It's just it has a very good autofocusing. 
So the, both of them have full frame and they cover the full sensor when you shoot with them. To where the Canon doesn't, um, it has a full frame, but it doesn't cover the sensor. So you have a crop sensor and then you, you know, you have to deal with that shit. So this one has a flip out screen. The other ones doesn't. And, um, this also, I don't understand why this doesn't because Nikon has a D5500 that has a full flip out screen. The cheap ass camera. Now you can find these cameras for nothing. So I don't understand that. And these cameras are not cheap. You know, I mean, this, this, even though it's, you know, it's 2000 in my country, you can buy a freaking car and uh, a very good car for this type of money. So this is not a cheap camera. And the prices for doing like normal work here, like a uh, normal photography, which is weddings and things like that is not high enough to where it's worth to buy a camera for 2000 euros, you know? And this is the other thing, like everybody's acting like this is no big deal, but it is a big deal. These cameras are expensive for where they are because they're not a real video cameras. They will overheat and, you know, they they have limits on recording. So, you know, it, it's all about this, like people bragging about their filmmaking crap. They act like filmmakers running around. And at the end of the day, they are actually do the same thing. They shoot weddings and and events and things like that and corporate stuff because this is the stuff that makes you actually money so like i said these are more like accessories and they're too expensive for where they are you know normally they're designed i think in the beginning for the fact that you know for regular people for you know family you know parents that go on vacation to you know to take pictures of their dog and their cat and their kids and stuff like that so you know but they're too expensive for that I mean, no, no normal Joe or Schmo is going to go buy this to do that. And that's why now the professionals are buying them because they're cheaper and uh, they have good quality, but they're not a real video camera. And that's the thing, you know. So now, like I said, between these three, I think, I think Nikon has some kind of deal with Sony and uh, they had to implement this card because if this had a flip out screen and a normal SD card, I think this would have been a lot better value. For example, you know, the Sony has you know the stupid xqd format which is retarded it's harder to work with so then you need to invest another 1500 or something like that into a computer and you know, like a build that you can work with this crap and so it's not the greatest you know the value actually um but it still keeps its value see this one is still 2000 without the lenses now the canon like i said i don't know i think it's behind i, I would not buy the canon uh, you know, I don't know, it's just I would not buy it because it's behind as far as, you know, cropping into the sensor and maybe even upscaling and stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but it's not right. Maybe, you know, I mean, this is just my opinion. Um, the black magic. Now, the black magic, I think their image quality is more close to, like, you know, cinema type of look. To the, the, the static of this image is nice, but the design of the camera is stupid. This is not a, you know, picture taking camera. It's a freaking video camera designed like a picture camera because people are so used to it. I think it's stupid. It's also for marketing purposes. I think they need to make a camera like the Orsa Mini Pro that's, but, but make it smaller because if they can fit all this technology, and it's not even a full frame actually, um, into something like this, they can make a better video camera. So, what I'm trying to say is that I wish they would make like a, a video camera, like like the Sony FS5, for example. But this camera is expensive, you know, and it's also doesn't have a full frame sensor. It actually, it looks like a huge ass sensor if you look at the pictures. You know, I mean, the sensor looks freaking humongous. It doesn't look like a like APS-C, you know. But it, you know, it is a, a nice camera. It has the right features. It has, you know. The handle on the side, which I think it's it's a very nice implemented design, but where this is missing, it's um, a nicer screen and a full sensor and image stabilization and um, what else do we need, right? Uh, and a good auto focusing tracking, you know, for face detection and eye detection and stuff like that. If this had that, it would have been also you know a better value, but. You know, these cameras are very expensive because they consider like prosumers and, and so then they know that people make money with them so they jack the price like crazy. And so the other camera that's, you know, like a normal video camera, which will be like UA camera, all this stuff, the Nikon and the Sony and the crap, this is like a B camera, it's a, you know, or like I say, use it as accessories. Um, 
this this one right here, the GVC, I think is pretty good, except this stupid camera has a micro four thirds mount on the bigger sensor, on the APS-C type of sensor. And this is also stupid from GVC's, you know, decision process to do that. They could have made it with a Nikon mount or a Canon mount or whatever mount, but not a smaller mount than the sensor. It makes no sense. And I think it could have a handle on the side and, and you know, this form factor is not bad. The screen, I think, is crappy, but otherwise the, the ergonomics of the camera looks very good. I think it would have been a, a, a better, you know, like selling, you know, item if they had a full frame, a different mount, and uh, image stabilization and, and you know, auto focusing that works better. So that's the thing. None of them has really these things that we need. Now, you can go more expensive and this still would not, besides the auto focusing, it would not have nothing different. And it's stupidly expensive. Uh, this is not worth it. Never in life, this camera, it's worth it for typical go and shoot videos and, I mean, going and shooting weddings and things like that because it's stupidly expensive and I just don't, you know, I just don't see it, man. It's just retardedly, stupidly expensive. So, you know, I shot with this camera, right? It's a DSLR that shoots 4K and it shoots it very well and it shoots into a compressed format, but it still retains a lot of the quality. So you have an MP4 or a MOV format. I think actually in 4K you have to be in an MOV format. And it's very good quality. I mean, the feedback that I got from the clients was like, it looked like you were there. So I shot with a 50 millimeter, 24 to 70. And uh, of course I had to use manual focus because this one, the tracking on video is not there. So, you know, you have very good quality and you just tweak a little bit, just normal profile, like a, not normal, but like a natural or neutral, whatever it is. And actually you get a lot better, you know, image and you just have to tweak a little bit and, and do the, the, the contrast the way you want and you like and also the, the sharpening and you're all good. You can adjust your color a little bit if you want. It has enough flexibility for the normal use. I mean, you don't want to make yourself like shell of the work like with the black magic you know camera and who's gonna go shoot weddings with this you know or or shoot like normal stuff that takes you know you shoot for a couple hours this makes no sense this camera none neither these um other cameras they're they're shooting in very high format like who's gonna shoot raw you know this type of work you know it's not worth it so you want a camera that can shoot good in a you know decently bitrate like 100 150 like the d50 or actually even this one shoots at um, it's about 150 megabits you know you want something like this the only thing like i said you know this type of cameras for the things that we need and the things that we use they should all have good image stabilization they should have focus tracking you know because this is what you use in this type of situations you know and all these cameras do so, I mean, using something like, like this, I don't know how you call this camera, this handy cams or whatever they call it, you know, it's, it's just, to me, it's just, you know, they have fixed lenses, they have small sensors, and I go to low light, they, you know, it's, I don't like using those. They are big and bulky, but, you know, so you will want something that we can put our own lenses on that has image stabilization, focus tracking, and, uh, good usability, and a bigger screen that you can see what you're doing. So, if you, for example, take a Ninja 5 and you mix it with, uh, with, let's say, even the Z6 here, you will get a very nice camera and you do it in the format of the, uh, what is it? So, for example, you, you, t you take any of these sensors, you know, you, you take the Sony sensor or the Nikon or any one of them, full frame sensor, and you go to um, something like this, like you, you make a rectangular type of camera, you know, which is normal. And you put the Ninja 5 here on the side, basically, which is a, a screen. I mean, if you think about it, the, um, what is that? The Phantom 4, if you get a plus one, has its own screen. And it's just a nice big screen, thin and, and light. And, you know, why can that be done for cameras? They don't have to have these big ass bulky, you know, screens. They can have like nice digital ones. So nothing that I've seen today is done very innovative, except, the Ninja 5, I think they, they try to always do things like, um, they're innovative, but their, their screens are also bulky because they're recorders. But if you didn't have to record, for example, if you take 
the Ninja 5 and you take a screen from the uh, the Phantom 4, right, plus, and it's just nice skinny big screen that you can see and it's very bright and it has all the touch functionalities on the screen, right, so you put that on there and you can um, have like a handle like this on the side and a removable top handle with a microphone mount. Um, so then you can, you know, you can have a screen here, you can have dual batteries, all the buttons are actually on the screen to where it makes more sense because a software can be updated, but you know, this you cannot update anymore. It's all buttons. And to be honest, they don't, you know, they still have issues. Like I have a NG camera that has waterproof buttons and they still got messed up. So, you know, at the end of the day, we don't need buttons anymore. We, you know, I want to see something more innovating. You know, something that's using the full capability of the technology today. But all of them, they're missing features, you know. But they just have to put it into one camera. That's all, you know. I mean, just do that. Or or Nikon, you know, if they can they can make a video camera like that, you know. What is this crap, you know? Why can't they make a flip-out screen? I mean, it makes no sense, you know. This is so stupid. So, like I said, you know, you get a Nikon 6, uh, what are you missing? You're missing the flip-out screen and you have stupidly expensive media right to recording you got that then you have the a7 to where it has a stupid kodak and then you have the same no flip out screen and you know again it's a too small of a camera and then if you rig it up anyway it becomes heavy with the lenses and everything canon has the flip out screen but then they crop into the sensor so it's stupid they could have made a better camera i think i think they could have made a better camera because look what happens you know this is what you get you know, you get this big ass bulky crap with this camera because let's say they fix the fact that you can record into a SSD and that's good, right? And they have the Blackmagic ROG now, which is lower, you know, a lower file size. But at the same time, you still have to, you know, charge this camera somehow. And for that, you have to have some kind of V mount or whatever mount to put a battery and this becomes big. So you cannot just pick up the camera and go and shoot because you need to attach somehow some big ass battery to this camera. So, you know, it's not practical, you know, this is ridiculous. Even if I want to get one of those as an accessory, they're, they're missing features, you know? Like I said, they're, they're, you know, you're going to deal with some, some crap and we shouldn't. I mean, you know, for example, Nikon here, why could they put a flip out screen if they can do it in their, their, their cheap cameras? I mean, there is no reason for them not to do it. There's no reason except marketing bullshit or some kind of deal between them and Sony or who knows what. Of course, this is my opinion. And, uh, and, and this is what I think. I think it's, it's not right that, that they don't have a flip out screen. You know, this came out after Sony and everybody's complaining about the fact that the Sony did not have a flip out screen. So Nikon came out with, you know, similar camera with no flip out screen. So this is just stupid. This is also maybe just to, you know, sell the next camera and then that one is going to have it maybe but they're going to charge you a thousand more which is stupid um so you know it is a, a sony also maybe they they're going to put in the a7s3 or who knows what um panasonic you know okay i didn't research that camera but yeah i think this is it so it's still about 1600 so they're all you know this is cheaper and this has you know a flip out screen and it has a SD cards now. Yeah, so you can say, okay, why don't you get this? But the, this has a smaller sensor, and you know, if you should real estate, then you have issues with that. And if you have to buy friggin', you know, what do you call this thing, a Metabones adapter that tags into this, so this becomes also over two thousand with that. And, you know, so the, I mean, you know, it's a bit ridiculous this stuff because it doesn't matter where you do, you have to get more things. To make these cameras work and uh, you know I do know that they made another camera which is a full frame but um, that camera is 4000 which is ridiculous for a again a just you know an accessory because it's not a actually video camera you know it's an accessory it's, it's, it's just the factor it's, it's a picture camera it's not a video camera and I get that but you know they're good on gimbals because they're small and stuff so so for example I would not get this camera because it has too small of a sensor and um, I don't want to deal with the fact to get a Metabones adapter, then, you know, I don't have Canon lenses anyway, and so this doesn't really work for me. The, the only option would be the Nikon, and uh, since the, uh, you know, the focusing got better, it's, it would be not bad. It's just it's stupid that it doesn't have a flip-out screen, and that it has this stupid expensive media, you know? And, okay, you can 
you know, let's say you, you get this kit here, and then you'll have to get a Ninja 5, which, you know, tax on top of that, which is ends up being 2,700, like, I don't know, which is a Ninja 5. Um, yeah. So this becomes a very expensive type of, you know, camera, and then you can record with this. But this also needs batteries, so that's what I'm saying. Like, so, so it's like, so all these cameras for me, they're, they're basically deal breaker. Very simple, you know, I mean, it's just not, not the right camera. I cannot find today the right camera. Then you can say, okay, I buy a camera that's not too big, not too small, you know, and you can just pick it up anytime and go shoot and have everything that you need. It's just not there. It's not very innovative, I think. The, the industry just keep creating the same crap for marketing reasons and they're not innovating their products, you know, because there's no reason for them why they shouldn't, um, like I said, they shouldn't, you know, put something like this into a, you know, create a camera like, like, like this with the, with a full frame sensor and make it as a normal size, you know, like a, a normal, you know, create it like a freaking video camera, not like a stupid, you know, picture camera. Because, you know, they're called hybrids, but to be honest, if I go to an event and I have to do both, I ha I bring two cameras. I bring one that I shoot video with and one that I shoot the photos with. I don't use the same camera. So all this hybrid bullshit, it's, it's no point because at the end of the day you will have to get a, a you know a photography type camera and uh so i think the what the companies are missing to create a, a video camera for videographers you know not for movie makers and all this stuff there'll be people bitching about that doesn't shoot draw and all this stupid shit and these people they don't shoot with that stuff no movies they just go and do the same thing we all do shooting events and, and interviews and corporate stuff and weddings and things like that because this is what makes you actually money so if you have a commercial or something that you want to shoot then you can go rent a freaking whatever you want a red if you want you know because it pays for that so there's no need to own these freaking cameras you know this expensive ass you know big production camera so i think all they have to do is just mix a ninja 5 with any one of those you know the nikon the panasonic you know not really um canon no uh, Black Magic would have been a good idea to mix this with the Ninja Fire, like, you know, create a normal camera, like, similar to the Sony. Basically, at the end of the day, the point is that there is no camera yet out there that is, uh, you know, worth getting, you know, that has these simple things that we need. Like I said, I mean, we need a camera that has a nice big screen, bright, you know, like the, like I said, the Phantom 4s have. They're, it's a very nice screen. And uh, it can be with the, all the software from Ninja 5 with all the settings and the stuff that you can, do, you know, you can control the camera directly. Like Blackmagic does that. But the problem is that, uh, you know, the screen doesn't move and it's stuck on the back and it's not good in the bright light. So it's a wordless, bigger screen. They use a lot of battery for no reason. It's stupid, honestly. And the design of the camera also, it's not right. There should be, you know, the long way and... Uh, I think you can achieve a lot better, you know, results if you design a camera that way instead of this stupid DSLR looking thing that's actually bigger, it's, it's it's wider than a DSLR and then it just doesn't work so good in gimbals anyway and then it just makes no freaking sense, this stupid thing. Yeah, it shoots for 6K and all this stuff and Blackmagic RAW, but, you know, it's just not designed right. So, at the end of the day, um, it doesn't have full frame also, you know, so, I mean... You know, you see all these cameras, look, the DA50, full frame, cover the whole frame, shoots amazing, you know, you get amazing results with this. I don't need nothing better than that, you know. I want a camera that has a full frame from any of these cameras, this DA50, the Z6, or the, the, the where is it, the uh, freaking Sony, which I don't know where I put the Sony. So, you know, basically, you know, you can do all of that. Um, take any of those three sensors, you know. D50, Z6, Sony A7 III, and design a camera that uh, has the feature of the, the Ninja 5. Um, you know, you can control and play and record everything from the, the screen and, and adjust your settings maybe and everything. It would be nice. And then, you know, has some, some good features like, like I said, um, this verbal ND filter, image stabilization, and good auto focusing because the Nikon and the Sony, they, they, they already have that, you know, they, they have this type of good, you know, phase detect and eye detect. So 
that's all they have to do. They just have to implement it into a actually video camera that you can use. And it's okay if it's not shooting raw and all this bullshit. You know, you can shoot a movie at 150 megabits. But the format, you know, I don't want to ex XAVC, so I think it's better if Nikon makes one of these cameras. And then, you know, we all, we will be happy about it with, you know, like a dual battery in the back, swappable, um, because you need a lot of power. So, you know, have a screen that opens nicely, flips around all the way, and um, and that's it. Removable handle, you know, handle on the other side, like here. This is a nice implementation, you know, with the side handles, and um, and and that would be a perfect camera. Like the FS5, I think is very nice camera. It's still very expensive. I don't know why it's so expensive. I mean, the states you can find them cheaper, but here in Europe they they seem expensive. And this doesn't even have a full frame. I mean. You know, and it's not stabilized the sensor. So, you know, basically just take one of those mirrorless and put it into a freaking video camera. That's what I'm saying. With the Ninja 5, you know, and it'll be a perfect camera for all the uses that we actually use the cameras for. All right. So enough chatter. In conclusion, which camera would I buy? Well, you guessed it. None of them because I'm tired of these companies just bullshitting, you know, the prosumers. They actually made these cameras for consumers. And they're way too expensive for that, but they have the prosumers advertising for them for free, doing stuff on YouTube and, and all this stuff. So, you know, even bad advertising is good advertising at the end of the day. But what pisses me off is the fact that they cannot make a product that, you know, it's right. I mean, there's no reason, like I said, why this camera does not have a flip-out screen. Like I said, their, their $500 camera, $300 or whatever it is now, has a flip out screen. So it's not about the cost. It's about marketing bullshit. It's about whatever deals they have between them and to keep the, the, the people, you know, hoping for the next camera so they can sell the next camera or some crap like that. I mean, it shouldn't be so hard to take this type of technology, put it into a normal rectangular camera, put a nice five inch screen on there, um, you know, put like batteries in the back so we don't have issues with batteries anymore side handle, top handle, you know, verbal and defilters and, uh, you know, image stabilization and focus tracking on video. And you make a, a really good video camera for prosumers. And in general, these people that we do like typical videography type of work, you know, I'm not talking about cinematography. I'm talking about videography, the things that we do, shooting weddings and events and interviews and things like that. We need a camera for that. And all these other cameras, they're you know, fixed lens and they have small sensors and agoda low light. So we don't want those. We want these cameras because we have these lenses for it. We like the look of the, the full frame. So this is what we actually want. And it's not done for us. You know, they, they do it at a super high price for no reason. Like the C200 is ridiculously stupid high and it makes no sense. So I think it's, it's just a, a bullshit market. It's a bullshit market and people, even people on YouTube, they make excuses for this company. Oh yeah, you know, you, yeah, you can make it work. Why should we make it work when you pay still 2000, you know, euros for a camera and it doesn't have a freaking flip out screen, which is the simplest thing they can do. So it's not like they need, I don't know, some kind of high technology to do that. So, you know, it's ridiculous. So that's why I say we have to stop buying these cameras until they do this right. They make the cameras right. It's not right that they're just trying to sell the shit every year and creating a lot of waste just for marketing purposes. You know, they should make the right products because soon we're going to run out of resources and then, then we're going to sit on our ass and, uh, you know, hope that we didn't do this shit anymore. Or maybe not us, but our kids or, or their kids, they're going to be in big trouble because of this bullshit that is going on today. So anyway, let me know what you think. I know probably I'll piss some people off. It's fine. And um, thank you for watching. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. This camera should also record into an SSD because there is no reason not to. The SSDs are a lot cheaper now. Since Blackmagic can do it, anybody could do it actually. Just, you know, record directly into an SSD that goes into the side of the camera or something. And it would be amazing. Even in the back of the screen, maybe just like a, the Ninja 5 or whatever. So that would be an amazing feature. The other thing that it should do is, uh, oh yeah, make sure that it also records into a MOV or MP4 format because we don't always need the ProRes or RAW or any type of you know high formats like that. We need just normal 
MOV, like the, the, the way the Nikon shoots or the uh, way the Sony shoots without this stupid codec of X, AVC or whatever. And uh, that would be cool because sometimes we just need to shoot in a, a more compressed format that still give you very good quality. And that's plenty good, more than we actually need. Because by the time we deliver the, the content, it gets compressed and then it gets put on, you know, social media or on um, whatever sites and then it gets compressed even more. So then all this quality that people always brag about ends up, you know, crunched into crappy quality that is, is, is ridiculous, you know. So everybody's bragging about 4K and 6K and 8K, but at the end of the day, you put the crap on these freaking sites and it needs to be so compressed that nobody can tell the freaking difference between a high-end camera and a freaking, you know, uh, two, $300 camera, for example, because it's so compressed, the whole thing, that it doesn't matter anymore. This is also all a lot of bullshit marketing. That's all I'm going to say.